Hello, summertime, am I right? Uh, welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks, everyone, on this Monday evening. A couple of very, very July-like days, yesterday and today, and uh, the numbers certainly bear out that this is the hottest stretch thus far in 2024. We hit 87 at the airport on this Monday afternoon after 84 yesterday, and through the first almost three weeks of the month, we're running 4.3 degrees above the average, pretty much a guarantee at this point that May will be yet another warmer than average month across the area. So very impressive numbers today, and I think we'll do even better, quote unquote, uh, tomorrow afternoon. If you watched my summer forecast last week, I talked about how summer is the one season of the year in which on the list of hottest seasons on record, you don't see any recent years, really. 1995 is as recent as it gets on this list. Just about all of these years were in the 1930s. In 1940s, whenever I, you know, show something like this, of course, it brings, you know, some climate change skeptics out of the woodwork to make comments and things like that. And, you know, the skepticism can be easily disputed uh, with maps like this. These are the temperature anomalies in the 30s and early 40s when we had a lot of those hot summers. Look at the global temperature map. This blip right here, this warm spot right over parts of North America, including the Midwestern U.S., Otherwise, the world was not very hot in the 30s and early 40s. Compare that 12-year stretch to the most recent 12-year stretch in which pretty much the entire world is well above the average temperature-wise. So, yeah, just because it was hot here locally in the 30s and early 40s does not mean that global warming is not a thing or, or anything like that. In the meantime, on this hot afternoon, we had... Uh, a couple of renegade thunderstorms that popped up, especially um, up near Toledo and especially out towards Sandusky of the Cedar Point area. A couple of hail producing storms. For the most part, though, the heaviest of the uh, storm activity has been up in Michigan uh, today, where a severe thunderstorm watches out for places like Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids in the central and western parts of the lower peninsula. Also on guard for severe weather in the high plains and up against the front range of the Rockies this evening. Probably going to be some tornadoes in northeastern parts of Colorado. Now, the severe weather risk tomorrow will be quite a bit higher and focused mostly on the Corn Belt. This is a, uh, a day that everyone has to be weather and aware in a place like Des Moines, uh, Springfield, Omaha, up towards Milwaukee, the Chicago area as well. In fact, highlighted in this is a uh, level four moderate risk for severe weather issued by the Storm Prediction Center for parts of southern Iowa, eastern Iowa, and western parts of Illinois as well. So whenever you get a risk category like that, you really have to pay attention. So it's going to be a big severe weather day, it looks like, tomorrow in that part of the country. Then as our cold front shifts east, the severe weather threat also shifts east, although it looks lower on Wednesday as compared to tomorrow. I think that heavy, gusty thunderstorms are most likely Wednesday around uh, the boot heel of Missouri, parts of southern Illinois, southern Indiana. But even up into Ohio and extreme southeastern Michigan, maybe uh, northwestern PA, western New York, I'm not going to be able to rule out at this point a couple of feisty storms. Now, this does not look like a tornado day in our part of the country, but a hail-producing storm, a storm that produces some gusty, strong winds, something that can't be ruled out, certainly, in our viewing area and up into uh, northwestern PA and western New York as well. And the timing on this is mostly late afternoon and early in the evening on Wednesday. Until then, the story is the heat. Now, the record high temperature at the Youngstown Warren Airport tomorrow afternoon is lower hanging fruit than today's record high. Today's record high was 91. Tomorrow's record high, 89, set back in 1934. Now, I think it's possible we'll tie that tomorrow afternoon. I think a lot of local thermometers are certainly going to flirt with the 90 degree mark tomorrow afternoon. With dew points, not crazy high, but elevated. Those dew points up to around 60 or so, combined with the temperature in the upper 80s. Pretty uncomfortable stuff tomorrow afternoon. And the dew points will continue to rise then Tuesday night into Wednesday. And so if you haven't put in your you know, window air conditioning unit just yet, if you have one of those, uh, maybe a good time to do so because tomorrow night's going to be pretty uncomfortable. And even though Wednesday won't be quite as hot as today and tomorrow, it'll be more humid with those dew points in the mid 60s. Now, in the wake of our front, the dew points start backing off on Thursday. It'll be a much less humid afternoon on Thursday. I think we'll get a very nice break at the end of the week. This looks like a very comfortable day coming up on Friday. Before the dew points start trending up during the upcoming weekend, which is Memorial Day weekend, and with that increase in moisture, I think will come some increasing chances for some wet weather. But in the near term, I think we are largely dry on Tuesday. Now, as we get into the afternoon, just like we saw today up near Sandusky, Along the lake breeze, could there be a renegade shower or a storm up near I-90 especially? Ashtabula, Geneva on the lake, places like that. I think that's possible. 
does any of that activity sneak down as far south as our television viewing area? That's pretty unlikely. I think the vast, vast majority of us are dry on Tuesday. This warm front then lifts in tomorrow night. Again, a warm, uncomfortable night tomorrow night. Wednesday, could there be a renegade shower in the morning? I can't rule that out, but by far and away, the better chance of wet weather comes later in the day. Now, it's interesting, our in-house model here really does not show much in this warm sector Wednesday afternoon, early Wednesday evening. Uh, does it have the right idea? Possibly, but most of our modeling suggests there's at least a, a scattering of showers and storms. I don't think this is a big severe weather day in our part of the country, but you know, a couple of rowdy thunderstorms before the afternoon and early evening hours are through possibility. Now this front's in no hurry to come east, and because it's kind of lollygagging, we're going to keep that chance of showers and storms in our forecast for most of Wednesday night, maybe even first thing Thursday morning. But then I do think the drier air wins the battle by Thursday afternoon and into the day on Friday. Now as we look ahead to the upcoming weekend, Memorial Day weekend, uh, the, the forecast is not exactly a cool one, but it will be cooler than it is right now. I think we got a lot of highs in the upper 70s, perhaps 80 or so in our future at the end of this week into that long weekend. The end of the month does not look very warm at all. I think, uh, you know, we could string together a few cooler than average days right at the end of May. You know, it's the end of May, so it's not going to be cold out. But could we have a few cooler than average days in a row? Yeah, that's a possibility. Now, it's only Monday, but talking about rain chances for the Memorial Day weekend... A lot of people are going to have plans and are already asking about uh, the forecast. We have a rain chance in each day, but because it's days five, six, and seven in our forecast, all these chances are going to be pretty low for now until we have a better sense as to uh, the exact you know, weather features that are possibly going to kick up showers and storms. My gut feeling is at this point that Sunday is the day we have to keep an eye on for uh, the best chance of showers and storms, but at this point, that's just my gut feeling. We're not going to have that in our official forecast just yet because it is just Monday. So my advice, if you have plans for Memorial Day weekend, whether it be Saturday, whether it be Sunday, or on Memorial Day itself, just keep checking back with the forecast this week. At this point, it doesn't look like a totally dry weekend. It also, to me, doesn't look like a totally wet weekend either. It's probably somewhere in between with splash and dash, hit or miss, showers and storms, perhaps characterizing Memorial Day weekend this year. In the meantime, thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Monday evening. I'll see you back here same time, same place on Tuesday evening.